You know, I want to call this the era of the Joshua and the Caleb's. An era where people will go out despite what others may say or do, despite the dangers out there, despite the naysayers of Joshua, the Caleb, the Jeremiah's who believe that they're too young and God is saying, no, you're not too young. I am putting the words in your mouth as you would have heard me say earlier on. And that is the era that we are in. Young people taking a stand despite what people say, but adhering to what God is saying. And the young man who I know has been fearless in his attempt to, to allow the voice of the people to be heard, Mr. Nikolai Edwards. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine, thank you. It's pleasure, pleasure to be here. <laughs> As I said, I've known Nikolai for some years. Yes. Yeah. We worked together so. before at Wind Communications, and I've seen this young man really grow, of course, in terms of his vision. And that's why I did not refer to um, Progressive Party as a party. I said political voice. Yes. Um, am I right in making such a statement? Yes. Is it more of a voice? Yes, it, that, that's what it is, a voice, a movement. Because in Trinidad and Tobago, you're seeing uh, the number of voiceless persons in society um, growing because we've entrusted persons uh, to speak on our behalf and they're not doing a good enough job. So it's time that we, individually and collectively in society, start to take back our voice. So mm -hmm. this is exactly what it is, providing a voice for the voiceless. Now I refer to you as fearless, but fearless doesn't mean the absence of fear in itself. Sure. Uh, likewise, peace doesn't mean the absence of war, sure. right? Um, when you first decide, listen, I, I want to do this, mm -hmm. did you have concerns? Because we hear all of the naysayers I mentioned about yourself, and congrats to Michaela as well. I want to give yes. all the props to all the young yes. people who are taking this position. Did you have concerns like, am I, am I really doing the right thing? Does this even going to make sense? The, the, the concern, what yeah. was the initial feeling? I had concerns then and I still have concerns <laughs> now. Um, but it really came from a place of Trinidad and Tobago. We seem to be polarized politically, that is. So if it is that there is an issue with the government, um, an issue with a political entity, a lot of people are afraid to speak out because they're fearful of being victimized. They're fearful that um, I may lose my job, I may be blacklisted. So these were some real concerns that I had. The fortunate thing was that I've been working over the years, building a name for myself in the youth um, sphere to really carry a voice for young people right. and it opened up so many doors for me. So I was placed in a position where you can have any kind of government coming in regardless of political party. I was not fearful of losing a job. I was not fearful about how am I going to feed myself or anything of this sort. So thankfully I put the building blocks there. Um, I've had a strong support and it actually took me two years for me to come to this point where I'm saying to the public I am indeed going forward. Mm -hmm. Two years of preparing myself mentally, emotionally, and so on, um, putting away even some finances for a rainy day. And it has brought me to this moment where I know um, I'm called to something higher than myself, um, something that I can't even imagine. But I know that I have to see Trinidad and Tobago in a much better place than it is currently. You mentioned building blocks. So what is the cornerstone of those building blocks for you? What is the one thing that you stand on? principle-wise for yourself that you know what despite whatever storm comes you're gonna see mm -hmm. this thing through yeah it, it really is a whole um understanding that i am um, as i said called to something higher uh, i came to a realization that i had it within myself to be a voice for others so over the years, I had positive affirmations from my family, from friends, from persons that I worked with. And I recognized that I had a debt to pay back to society because I had been richly blessed. I am richly blessed uh, in so far as having a good education, having good support systems, um, interacting with some exceptional people. Life has not been so hard for me um, that I had to just simply cop out. I have, of course, had my challenges and well, it's no, 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 um, it's not something that I shy away from whatsoever. It was very much public, but in 2015, my father was one of the escapees uh, from the Port of Spain jail, and he was subsequently murdered. They found his body two days later, and that was a real defining moment for would me. Would you say that was a catalyst? I would that, say... That because I remember when you came on the program, mm -hmm. and we had that interview, and I listened to the passion in your voice, and I think at that point, you 
you just had to address this issue mm -hmm. because others were shying away from it and because it touched you personally, mm -hmm. you responded. Um, so was that the catalyst? It was in, indeed a catalyst because what I came to realize in that moment, Sheldon, is we can advocate, because I'd been advocating for young people, advocating for various things across Trinidad and Tobago, but without the political will to do certain things, um, we will just be spinning top in modern civil society. Mm -hmm. So a simple thing, and I will say a simple thing, such as criminal justice reform in this country, because it can be done by um, both sides working together to ensure we have the right legislation. Why is it that we have persons sitting in our prisons on remand yard? That means they have not been found guilty, they have not had their day in court, mm -hmm. waiting for six years, 10 years, 14 right. years. So it made me realize how important the individuals who we entrust, their decisions can impact on, on the lives of the average citizen. Mm -hmm. I did not want to ever see that situation happen to anyone again and I know that it happened to many before me in terms of families um, being in a situation where you have your loved ones not seeing their day in court not experiencing justice so I started fighting for justice in this country let's go now to the actual party yes and the genesis and you know putting the right team together and even just registering the party sure. was that an easy process when you went to the EBC with all the documents yeah. in hand did they say boy go from here or, <laughs> or did they say you know because some yeah. people you're not the first and the last that would have mm -hmm. gone and some success others they would have turned yeah. down what was the process like so I came to the decision in 2017 that right. definitely well, that's right there yeah okay. mm -hmm. so I came up with a design and it was actually in the shape of a steel pan mm -hmm. and the name was something I had decided upon before because of the kind of politics I'm interested in, right. progressivism or center-left politics, where we're seeing smaller to moderate government, government not being as intrusive in mm -hmm. your business, but rather liaising with the business, the business sector, civil society, to right. set the right framework or the right tone for the country. Um, so I decided Progressive Party, and I decided on that symbol. When I submitted it to the Elections and Boundaries Commission, it was turned down because they said you can't have national symbols um, registered for your party. So I had to Okay. think long and hard and that's when I came up with the guiding flame mm -hmm. because and I'll give you just this backstory sure go ahead being from San Fernando proud San Fernando boy that's right. um, <laughs> traveling to Port of Spain to work and, and to Central at that time passing Petra train on the left and you're seeing that flame and I was inspired by it because knowing from Petra train it has brought a lot of wealth and development to the country um, but I was always questioning how much further could we have been? So this that has given us wealth, this has given us uh, development, you are seeing that flame as a symbol of where we have come, but also where we can go. You know, that, that's interesting because yesterday, and I think the guiding flame, and here what I'm saying it's interesting because yesterday I, I you know, was uh, ministering in church for Father's Day, mm -hmm. and I was making the point of when the Spirit of God led Christ into the wilderness. And when you're leading someone, you're actually with them. You're not just pushing mm -hmm. them away. You're holding them and you're leading them there. Yes. And the thing is, I think sometimes as politicians, we forget that in that if this is a guiding light, the light mm -hmm. supposed to always be there with me, yes. you know, taking yes. me, holding their hands, that kind of thing. Do you think as leaders, and I'm not pinpointing anyone in particular, mm -hmm. do you think as leaders we have forgotten how to lead? If you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Not that, we, not that it's a deliberate thing they don't want to, mm -hmm. but in the, in, the, in the midst of the politicking, yes. have we forgotten really what it means to lead and to guide? Yes, so one of the things that I see at every juncture that I have an opportunity to speak on the issue of leadership, in Trinidad and Tobago we have a leadership crisis and it's not a paucity of leaders. We have leaders everywhere you turn, right. but people have a weird concept or understanding of what it means to be a leader. Mm -hmm. Many feel as though a leader is one who in the absence of that leadership or the individual in an organization, the organization is to crumble. Mm -hmm. That means you're depending solely on this one person to put everything in place and to hold up the organization. But real leadership means that in the absence of the leader, you have other leaders within Correct. the organization mm -hmm. who are able to hold it up and hold things together. Mm -hmm. Succession planning, planning, building Something other which leaders. Something we don't see much in Trinidad yeah. and Tobago. So we need that kind of servitude leadership in mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago. We need leadership that inspires and that is so very important because mm -hmm. I often say when you go to a political rally, you leave five 
fired up, but for the wrong reasons. You see us and them and we and this and the other, but are we leaving these political rallies motivated and patriotic and seeing the bigger picture? Mm. I want that kind of inspiration to happen in every single corner, regardless of which political party it is. We need to be inspiring each other to uh, not divide, not to, mm. not to conquer through those means, but right. work together to unite. So, yeah, and the guiding flame, it was so very important for me to use that symbol. And, of course, the EBC approved it. And I just want to put it out there because there, are, there is a political party that's going wrong and saying that um, we stole the name we were registered before them the politics start Sheldon it's um, but uh, yeah so <laughs> I want persons to know that we were registered officially mm. since 2017 August 2017 we have documentation to prove that and it's public record in the Gazette um, so we have been here but over the past two years, I've been working on the constitution for this party, putting systems in place, preparing myself mentally and emotionally, questioning whether or not I was ready for this challenge. Um, and I had been approached by both red and yellow, but my morals and values were not in alignment with theirs. And so I made this bold move to say, you know what, we have to do something different in 2020. We cannot continue to do the same things and expect a different result. Mm -hmm. Madness. So as young people, we're often told, be the change you want to see in the world, we're the leaders of tomorrow. So this is just me genuinely acting on the advice that I've been given by the elders. Nothing more, nothing less. You let me mention, and you, and you let me make a reference ever so often because I, for me it's very important. Yeah, definitely. Um, Joshua, Caleb, Moses. Mm -hmm. Because you mentioned now that you would have gotten advice from elders. Yes. The only reason, well, part of the reason why Joshua was able to take the Israelites through and to the promised land because of listening mm -hmm. and staying under the mentorship of Moses, partially. Your, your team, mm -hmm. what, how is, what's the composition like? Um, because people are making critical statements, it's just, just young people, mm. uh, they're taking advice from the older ones, it's the mix of, of, you know, of experience yeah. as, as well as youth. What is sure. the composition like that will make everyone feel comfortable, the elders, yeah. the young people, you know, those mid-range, sure. what's it like? So let me just start off by saying, having been working in youth development and being a youth advocate, a lot of persons were under the misconception that we just simply want all the older heads to move away and allow young people to come in. But that's not the case. We want to work alongside the elders. We want to get advice. We want them to be in advisory capacities and let us take up leadership mantles when necessary. So that's the same philosophy that I've walked into this political party with ensuring that we have the right mix, that there is a balance. For one, we don't have any former politicians being a part of this. Um, and the team is very small. There are a lot of persons who have no interest in being on the front What's line the age as well. Bracket? What's the age group like? Just average. Yeah, in terms so of the uh, we would have persons from early 20s mm -hmm. um, up to, I guess, 60s and so on. As, as, as main faces as well? No, well, that's the thing. Uh -huh. These individuals, we haven't gotten to the point of putting main faces okay. out. Understood. The intention right. is to have in the background the right framework built out. If you go to the website now, progressives.tt, you would see a draft constitution. You can sign up for membership, you can sign up to volunteer, you can uh, donate. We put the infrastructure in place way in advance of the launch so that from the time we, we start, okay. persons can get in there. So I've pulled on the strengths of persons and, and this is why I feel we need this type of leadership in the country of someone who can unite, who can bring the people to the table and allow everyone to build on their strengths and their talents. It's not about tearing down one another, but having the right kind of uh, team, the right grouping, right, coming together and understanding that this is our major goal, the vision for the country, how are we going to achieve this? Mm -hmm. So from now on, we're calling on persons to come forward and be a part of this. Anyone, we're not discriminating based on your uh, level of education, based on your religion, based on your race, none of those things. Once you're a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago and you genuinely want change, we want you on board. Mm -hmm. So that's the approach that we're taking. So it has been a very, very small team, Sheldon, pulling all of this together, mm -hmm. but it has brought us to the point now where we are open for business, so to say. So we want people to fill positions within the organization and we're also contesting all 41 constituencies in Trinidad and Tobago so long as people are willing to come from the constituencies. We don't want to impose anyone on, on any constituency. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to go into the constituency and liaise with them, consult and find out who among you do you think is fit to lead within your constituency and represent you in the parliament. So that's the kind of approach we're taking. Since the launch on Sunday, what has the response been like from John Public? Uh, let me tell you, it has been overwhelming. Mm -hmm. There are times I'm sitting... Uh, 
uh, reading comments on Facebook and I'm close to tears because people are just saying this is what we wanted, this is what we've been waiting for. I've been seeing young people saying thank you for giving me something that I can vote um, mm -hmm. and that is all I want to see, people having uh, an option that is viable. Of course you would have the naysayers, of course persons are coming out and writing negative things um, but the beauty in all of that, I'm seeing persons who are in support of what we're doing coming out and defending and not and would going... you say that is in the majority? Those yes. who are defending you? Yes, okay. I can say overwhelmingly that it is in the majority persons are defending because they're seeing this as a young person answering the call for better in the country. Um, so they're defending and it isn't even that kind of defense where they're attacking. It's simply putting facts out there, simply saying how about we change our perspectives and that's the kind of progressive politics that we want in this mm. country. Yellow and red. Mm -hmm. They have been the dominant colors of our of our perceived rainbow in sure. Trinidad and Tobago. And other parties have and I'm I'm hearing a vision, mm -hmm. I'm loving a vision, and there are many out there who have seen the comments, they are supporting a vision and it is needed. Mm -hmm. But there are many people who would have tried to, to break that our, that, that sort of being imprisoned by you know the, the mindset of it, you can only where these two parties are concerned, as sure. you mentioned, who are being polarized and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, is that a concern for you as well, that it's going to be difficult to uproot this mindset out of people that if it's not red, it's yellow. Mm -hmm. If it's not yellow, it's red. Sure. Because, there are, again, others have tried and they've, they've really fought a good fight. But in the end, mm -hmm. what, do we, what do you believe you have to hold on despite sure. what? Well, let me just say that I think the most dangerous of persons among us in Trinidad and Tobago are not necessarily the criminals and not necessarily the corrupt persons, are the persons who are diehard red and diehard yellow because they are stymieing progress from taking place in this country. Um, because we need people with open minds who are willing to put country before any and everything. Yeah, mm, um, yeah. It goes even back into Parliament. How often do you see your member of Parliament rising to his or her feet and saying uh, the constituents of X constituency uh, are in agreement or not in agreement with mm. this piece of legislation because of X, Y, and Z. So we need to have MPs who represent people, not party. Mm. Now, there will always be those who will continue to say, um, I'm a traditional X or I'm a traditional Y, and I'm not even going after those persons. Right. I'm not trying to change those persons' mindset because they may very well be brainwashed. They may be getting some kind of benefit from there, mm. and I cannot offer you probably the money that you may be getting or whatever it is. What I can offer you is a vision for Trinidad and Tobago. And we saw in 2007 where a particular political party came to the fore and was able to amass 22% of the vote, 144,000 votes. People were at that point ready for something different and I think more now they're ready for that change. We also have a situation every election where about one third goes to red, one third goes to yellow, and one third decides not to vote, period. I am looking to capture the imagination of those persons, as well as the millennials, the young people who are exposed worldwide uh, to mm. the politics, to different ways of doing things, and who come to the understanding that this can be implemented in Trinidad. You know, I, I like why you said that, because I was thinking while you were saying that, that politicians, they have this very myopic view mm. of what a victory is mm -hmm. and I say that for both sides because when you look at when they win whether it be when the UNC won or the PNM won they have we won mm -hmm. no you haven't <laughs> no, that's just me that's not the color that's just me and I'm saying that because they don't focus on those who did not vote and the frightening reality when you look at the percentage mm -hmm. it's sometimes wrong half a little more than half so which means you have not really won no the, the, the voice of the people. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned die hard. Be careful what you say because some people are really dying <laughs> hard deaths uh -huh. because of that. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm saying go vote for Nikolai or, or for Michaela. I'm simply saying we need to hear 
Correct. What they are saying. Correct. And give them a fair chance mm -hmm. to prove themselves. That's yeah. all I'm saying. And, and let me say this. Um, a question that I have been faced with um, by some is, so is it that your agenda is simply to become prime minister or whatnot? My interest is not in simply becoming prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago. It is about bringing about change in this country. And if it leads me to the office of the prime minister um, where I would be able to bring about some change, then that's good. But what did they ever ask Dr. Rollo, Mr. Manning, or Mrs. Besides of that question? I'm just saying. <laughs> But uh, the thing is, change can happen by those who are toiling in the vineyard, by yeah. those who are the unsung heroes, uh, your teachers, the persons who are taxi drivers, yeah. uh, the person sitting in a cubicle next to you. Change can happen any and everywhere. It's just that I've been working in civil society for about 10 years now, especially in the area of youth advocacy. And what I've come to realize is that we can have all the best intentions. We can be doing the work on the ground, uh, moving into spaces and agitating. But if there is not the political will, they were spinning top in mud. We need um, government support. Look at simple thing um, such as child marriages. Right. When we debated, and I had the fortunate pleasure of being a, a senator at that I point, that, yeah. um, and the first piece of legislation had to do with um, eliminating child marriages in Trinidad and Tobago. And it was a situation where civil society had been calling for this for years. Why are we having persons 18 years and over children, 8 year old, 10 year old, 12 year old, being married off to big hardback man and woman? And, and that wasn't right. But it, was, it took the political will of, of those in parliament to finally say, let's strike this off of the book so let's correct this wrong so we see the importance of those 41 individuals who sit in the lower house and the 32 who sit up in the uh, upper house so we need the 36 so we need to utilize our members of parliament but first and foremost we must put the right people in there mm -hmm. so I'm going with that whole spirit of yes this is a time for change um, but more so progress actually because change can be good or bad it can be exchange but progress is forward, um, forward, positive. It is always moving in that direction. With progress, it can't go back. That's regressing. So it's about progress. Trinidad and Tobago deserves to move mm. forward, guiding um, this country to the next level. So what's next for the PP? I didn't say PPP. Eh? Oh, okay. So, 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 so actually, let me, let me correct you on because that, though. Let me correct you on that. No, so the shortened <laughs> title. I mean, when I was thinking of the name as well. Um, oh, it's not PP. Is no, 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 all right, no, okay, no. All please, right. no. Well, I, so, yeah, no, it's, it's an it's a understandable <laughs> mistake. Um, we in the Caribbean, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, we're accustomed to um, these acronyms when it comes to the political party's name. So you have whatever, it's X, Y, and Z, right. or ABC. Um, um, and I wanted something completely different. So the shortened title, but at the same time not too far out of our imagination. So the shortened title of the Progressive Party, Progressives, we're the progressives. So you mm. identify as a progressive once you're a member of the party. Much the same way when you think about the Democratic Party, Democrats, Republican Party, Republicans, the Progressive Party, progressives. Mm. So, and when you see that you're a progressive, there's a certain connotation that comes across or, or, or is aligned with that. I like it, but I think the media is going to try and shorten it in terms of when they, when they want to put it up on the screen or they'll try to still try to shorten it and, and to, well, they put the word. P-R-O-S, pros, uh, pros, give us <laughs> pros. Um, but the thing is, we are not the PP, all right, um, all right. so the progressives, <laughs> and I'm going to hammer that in. This country needs to start thinking about progress, right. identify as a progressive. Um, the same way that I believe that uh, with the Patriotic Front is the Patriots. Um, that's what I think it's supposed right. to be. Um, we are the progressives. Mm -hmm. So we have the progressives. Mm -hmm. We have Ms. Michaela Pan and the Patriotic Front. Mm -hmm. We have Pep. Mm -hmm. We have Mr. What's the Duke. No, yes. he has, <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, I don't know who else I may have missed. I missed anyone? I think. Well, I think in last count, DBC has a hundred over a hundred parties registered. What? Yeah, so, but they're going through their list okay. because they actually called me to, to make sure that Let's I'm go forward. with what we've been seeing in the public sure, domain. Sure, okay, sure, so sure. those four. <laughs> and, of course, we have the opposition and, of course, currently in government, the PNM, that's six. Yes. One of the concerns people normally have during the election time is this thing called split votes. 
Thank you for bringing that up. Please respond. Splitting votes. What does it mean to split votes? Now, no, and there should be no party monopolizing the votes. Mm -hmm. So who am I splitting the votes from or among? If the vote splits two ways or a hundred ways, mm -hmm. it is representative of, of the, the democratic... Voice of the people. Right. right. Correct. And, and that's how people feel. So all these parties, and I will encourage anyone who feels as though they can't fit within the current party structures that exist, if you feel as though you need to run as an independent or something on your own, you live in a democracy. You have all and every right to participate in such a way. And the same way the citizens of this country have a right to vote for whoever, you should not feel at any point that your options are limited to two or to six or to what have you. This is a democracy. So this whole nonsense about splitting votes, we need to change our mindset where that is concerned. And I was also hearing a lot of persons saying um, along the same lines of splitting votes. So all they're coming here to do is split the vote and allow the party that is in power to remain in power. If the party that is in power remains in power, that's your fault. That's right. So that's don't right. put that on me. I am presenting an option for Trinidad and mm -hmm. Tobago. We have come that's years. A fear. That's, a, that's, a, that's an inner fear that many people don't address it mm -hmm. because they, they, they want to say something else, but it's easier to say that. Yeah. So yeah. let's turn your fear into action. If you're so fearful that we're going to be um, uh, stuck with this current regime, you get out. You act. You go out there and start lobbying persons, seeing how you can be a part of an organization, a political party, uh, and organize persons. You have to do your part. You cannot continue to sit at home, sit uh, on the street corners, and complain about what's taking place in the country and not be willing to do anything. I have decided to act. Um, and it, it was not an easy decision, but it came as a result of I was not seeing anything that was representing me as a citizen of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And therefore, I felt as though I needed to create that platform or create that space. So if running into the, the next election or elections to come in, in years, um, I am not at the head of the party, I am completely fine with that. But knowing I was able to do something that not many people in this country were willing to do, and I was able to attract people to come and, and start afresh, that will be comfort for me enough. Now you mentioned your website is up and people, yes. it's open to come on to whether they want to support as a volunteer or mm -hmm. whatever capacity. You, can, you could also even give feedback. We have our draft constitution there. You can go through that, give mm -hmm. feedback on the website. We're consulting, consulting, right. consulting. Has anyone, of course we're not calling names, mm -hmm. has anyone from the, the PNM or the UNC would have contacted you, not in any ma malicious way, sure. um, to offer advice or even, let's say, willing to join you yeah. so, if, if, if the need arises. So, yes, I have been contacted by persons, um, former ministers, um, and persons who are active in, in their political parties right now, persons who've left their political parties giving advice. Um, some of them have made a mockery of what I'm doing, um, saying that if I get 50 people to come out, then that's a lot. And this is where our politics has descended. Um, so you as an experienced person coming, and, and this is what you're saying, but I've also had persons messaging me um, who are in current political parties and saying congratulations because they recognize what I'm doing. It's not to unseat a government. That is short-term thinking. I it's think about it's to unseat ignorance. <laughs> You said it better than I did. Ignorance, yeah. yeah, because people are thinking, well, your only job, I got a phone call from someone, um, someone who is well known, and they were questioning me along particular lines and were saying, so is it my intention or pushing me in the direction of, is it that I'm trying to um, get rid of, of this current government? Right. And I said to him, no, that is not the intention. We would want a change in government. We would want to form the next government, a progressive government. But at the same time, to think that we're here set up only established on CETA government is very short-term thinking. Mm -hmm. It comes like registering uh, all these Venezuelans and after a year, what is the vision? So we need to think broader. Right. and then put programs and, and, and policies in place to treat with that broad vision. That's why, and no other political party that I am aware of, um, save and except uh, one, um, has identified a political ideology. When you think about red, when you think about yellow, what can you say is their political ideology? We're thinking that it's based on race, we're thinking it's based on, 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 on these different factions in society, but the progressive party, we believe in progressivism, center left politics and to, to, to uh, continue on, on what an explanation I was giving earlier um, we want to see 
policy reform. Mm -hmm. Don't come and tell the population that we're going to pave your road and, and build drains. That is your job. Actually, it's not even your, your MP's job. Your MP's job is to represent you. Your local government councillor can be the one who is on the ground seeing to certain things. Mm -hmm. But we're so accustomed dangling goodies over the population. I should be getting paved roads. I should be getting water in my pipe. That's right. Not based mm -hmm. on who is in government. Mm -hmm. This is why we need to have these statutory authorities, who are road authority even, whose job it is to continue the road paving works regardless of a change in government. In the last couple of minutes before we, we close, Nicola, and again, I welcome you back on the show anytime again yep, where we can you know, interact with the public uh, as well. Um, let's just say mm -hmm. you are sitting as prime minister. Mm -hmm. What would be the two or three major things you would look at immediately to address um, that you know that you think the country needs to see at this point in time. Right. So for one, as much as it may be a, a big feat, uh, I would want to see constitutional reform where we put in referendum. So when you feel as though your government, um, your members of parliament, they are not acting on your behalf, we should take certain decisions to the population and let them vote on it. So we should have a referendum built in there. Also the right of recall. We should, from the time that we're recognizing our MPs are not performing, you should be able to say, here's what, we, we can no longer continue with you, terminate your contract. Mm -hmm. So those are some things that I would want. But more importantly, and I think that what would reach people on the ground, we need to see reform in education. We need an education system that is more responsive to modern day needs and also anticipating right. things Agreed. that is coming in the future. We need health care that is uh, treating with the issues. I want to see technology employed in our hospitals mm -hmm. where I can go to a private facility, do let's say an x-ray, but at the same time go to a public facility and that doctor is able to pull up that x-ray and pull up my records right there so a All central right. portal Nicolai, so many we, more things uh, yeah we are out of time <laughs> but thank you so very much again you can send us all of your comments on our whatsapp and of course facebook and of course again congratulations to you and your team thank you very much God's blessings to you my brother